In today's video, I'm going to break down the most important skill jumps across every ranked map in Halo Infinite, except for Behemoth, because I don't like Behemoth. Why is it in the ranked playlist? It's too big. So that leaves us with Live Fire, Aquarius, Streets, Bazaar, and Recharge in that order, all of which I've organized for you in the play bar. Before we jump in, as always, if you like this content, find it informative, and want to see more of it, then please hit the sub button. Apparently, only 30% of you guys actually sub to the channel. If you were waiting to do so, now's the time. Halo is finally back, and the grind, it's only just getting started. This first jump on live fire is super useful, especially as a starting strat. It'll give you an early angle up to top mid, or you can just use it as an outplay. You have to jump off this panel and then very precisely jump clamber to this ledge above, which is more difficult than I'm making it look. To get to this panel, you jump hold crouch, and then you got a late jump off this panel. So you walk off and time the jump as late as possible to give yourself enough leeway to reach for this clamber. To hit that clamber, make sure you're holding crouch in the air as well. If you're holding crouch, it'll extend the range of this clamber so you can actually reach it. If you don't hold crouch, this jump is either very difficult or completely impossible. This isn't really a skill jump, but I just wanted to showcase this one spot on the map that I think is super useful behind the B stronghold. Not enough people are taking advantage of this. You can use it to make an outplay. You can clamber from both sides to get up here, or you can jump from these shoulders, which technically, if you've got very optimized movement, you can kind of chow out, jump back and forth. Depending on what you want to fight, you got a lot of flexibility here. Now, this jump is extremely difficult, and I have not seen many people actually pull this off in a game. Definitely very useful, though, so I expect at some point this will become the meta. Shout out to Clearly Me, by the way, who both showed me and taught me how to do this jump. He is great at this jump. I am still learning, so no guarantees that I'll get it in this recording. But it's a ghost jump, so throwback to Halo 3, ghost jumping occurs when you're jumping off of a ledge that cannot be physically stood on. So this ledge has an invisible barrier. It is impossible to stand on this ledge. But thanks to Halo's wonderfully mysterious game physics, you can somehow jump off of this ledge. Now, the objective here is to have your feet line up with any part, I believe any part of the top of this door ledge with as little downward momentum as possible. So basically, at the peak of your jump, you want your feet to be lined up with this ledge so that you can hit a very precisely timed follow-up jump. To do that, what I do is I hold crouch on the top of this panel and then walk off slightly and jump into this wall and then release crouch in the air. You can't be holding crouch in the air to make this work. And mash jump and pray. Mash jump and just hope that I connect with this invisible ledge. Oh, I did it. There you go. With this invisible ledge on the wall. So I start in crouch and I walk off a bit. And I, wow. Okay. Apparently I've learned it now. And honestly, I think that's proof enough that if you practice this jump, you can get it consistent and actually rely on it in game. So in total, jump to this panel, hold crouch, walk off a bit for a low jump. That How am I still hitting it, dude? Let's go. Low jump that lines your feet up with the top of the ledge and then release crouch in the air and mash jump and pray to the guardians that the jump will work. Good luck. I'm only going to show one jump on Aquarius. I'm sure there's others, but this one I found to be very useful. It's this ledge on the wall that you can stand on and shimmy across. It's a great spot to sit in if you want to look either up or down below. A couple notes about this ledge. No need to crouch to stand on it, so don't worry about crouching. Just a standard jump is fine. If you want to stand on it, similar to the ghost jump on live fire, you want to have as little downward momentum landing on this ledge as possible. So if you're jumping from below, then it's easy to stand on. But if you're jumping from above, the downward momentum is going to throw you off of that ledge and you'll fall. You can't stand on it. So if you are coming in from above the chow this direction, you want to basically jump off of it when you land on it. And you want to time that jump as late as possible. Because if I jump too early when I hit it, it'll bounce me out to the left. But if I wait, there's a perfect timing where if I let myself kind of connect with the wall and fall a bit and then wait before I jump, it'll hold me here. And I can kind of continuously jump and hold the angle and then jump off if I need to. You can also slide into it and apparently stand on it. I don't think I've ever done that before, for the record. 
you can slide into it and stand on it. So big, you know, good note. If you're uh, cracked with your movement, normally what I would say is slide on it and then thrust into the wall. If you have a thrust, that'll hold you there. Of all the advanced jumps on streets, this one off the light post to the bridge above the driveway seems to be one of the most useful and popular on the map right now. Though it's not the easiest jump to pull off, and I noticed some people were having difficulty hitting it consistently, so I figured I'd just explain how it works. The biggest recommendation I can give with this jump is to start by getting very comfy with the first part of it. So just learning how to stand on this light post, because you can sit here indefinitely, and it's a good spot to sit if somebody's coming through and they don't expect you. To do this, you need to crouch jump up to the light. So you jump, hold crouch to lift your legs, so you can land on this light post. You can either jump and crouch, or you can sprint, jump, and crouch. To get up there by sprinting, you increase the range and the height of your crouch jump, though it's not necessary to do for this spot of the map. You might notice when jumping to this light that your Spartan kind of naturally falls off of it. If you're having this issue, it has to do with the spacing of your jump and the timing of you letting go of the movement. So I find I carefully space the jump and then immediately release the left stick or I guess release the keys. So I stop my movement so I'm not pushing into this wall and that can ensure that I just kind of perch there. It's right there, I didn't hit it, right? So it has to do with the spacing and just immediately letting go of that left stick. Once you've done that, you can push into the wall and, uh, and kind of just like indefinitely walk into it, or you can jump over and over as well. And just getting really comfy doing all this is important. Once you have that down, then you want to jump from the light to the bridge, which is difficult in its own right because the timing is very tight. There we go. And you want to do a late jump off of the light as well because you'll notice if I'm jumping early, I'm hitting the roof of this, and that's going to affect my jump to the light. So you want to kind of, and that was a low jump there because of it, you want to walk off and late jump off of it. And if you can sprint jump, like I said, sprinting here is going to give you a farther range. If you hit this perfectly, you can sprint jump and then hold crouch and skip the clamber entirely and just land and slide apparently too. So there's a lot you can do with it if you get comfortable with that second part. So in total, you crouch jump to the light with good spacing and then do a late jump or sprint jump off the light to get to this bridge and skip this section of the map. Pretty neat little connection and hopefully that helps you. There is a couple other ways to get up to that bridge. You can use the thrust and sprint jump thrust and catch it just like that as long as you got a little bit of high ground. There's a very tricky way to get up there as well from here which is so difficult to connect that it might not be worthwhile and I might not hit it in this recording or you know I might not want to do it too many times. Almost. You're sprinting, jumping, and lining up a drop slide with the stairs. The issue is you can't shoot when you do this, and you're leaving yourself kind of vulnerable. Oh, we... So close, man. I'll show a clip of me hitting it. Yes! We're cracked. Let's go. Big place. There's two very useful skill jumps on Bazaar that I think will completely change your approach to center map. The first one on blue side, I think this is blue side, you have to sprint and jump off the needler and clamber the doorway just like this. Now this is not an easy jump to do. My biggest recommendation to get this down is to first get very comfy standing on the needler itself. The ledge is kind of small and difficult to pinpoint. The easiest way to land on this is to jump into the wall and have your body hit the wall before it hits the needler. You can set this up pretty easily just by holding forward into the needler and jumping. And then once you're up there, release the movement. You're now standing on top of it. From this position, you can actually complete this jump. It's just very tough and you've got barely any room to work with. You need to make sure you're standing on this needler, which is the highest point. And then you have to very quickly and precisely sprint jump to clamber the door. By sprinting before you jump, you increase the range and the height of your jump, which makes this possible. Mouse and keyboard players, you might have an advantage here because you've got no runway but I find that if you sprint towards the wall, you've got a little bit of extra space to work with for that sprint. Of course, if you're on controller, it's difficult to then turn and catch the door. But if you do it on a diagonal, you should still be able to pull it off. Because this is so difficult to set up, I find the best way to do this is just as part of a sequence. So to sprint jump, land on it, jump off of it, straight up to the door, all in one shot. Just make sure, once again, you're aiming the jump so that your body hits the wall before your feet make contact with the needler. This should give you more of a ledge to land on so you don't just slide off of nothing. Just like that. 
and then hit the clamber. Don't crouch for this, by the way. I misspoke in the live fire video. Crouching does not extend the range of your clamber. It just lowered my head so that I didn't bump the roof there. In this situation, you're better off not crouching at all for this jump. On the other side, we have a different jump, and guess what? It's also difficult as hell. This one, honestly, this might be even harder. You got to shove your body into the wall and then jump off the tiniest little pinpoint of a ledge up to this door and clamber up like so. Once again, one step at a time, the first thing you want to do is get very comfy jumping on this little tiny ledge right here. You can't stand on it, but you can feel your Spartan kind of hitch on it as you jump by. So this is not a ghost jump. I believe the Halo terminology is a double juggle is what they call it. And to do this, you want to push your body directly into this wall so you're stuck like this and jump. And I would say you want to aim yourself towards this corner. And just get good at this first. Note that I'm holding the control stick directly into the wall the whole time, so I'm not releasing the stick here. I'm also not inputting crouch. No need to crouch at all during this. At first, I would mash the jump button and hope to get the ledge, but I found that if you can get the hang of where it is, you can kind of feel your Spartan make contact with it and then time the jump, and that's better. Eventually, you want to be able to do this like to the left, not even looking, so that you can start to turn and pinpoint the clamber, which is <laughs> clearly not easy, dude. I don't know, like, I, I saw Evader hit a crazy clip doing this, just like it, it was easy, man. This, this shit ain't easy. But that is essentially all there is to it. The rest just comes down to your own practice. You got to push your body into the wall, hug that wall the whole time here as you jump and pinpoint this ledge, and then on the way, turn and clamber the door, which honestly, the door is a pain in the ass too. It just, it does not want to clamber even if i'm hitting the ledge it just it doesn't want to give me the clamber you know it just i think you want to go as far to the right as you can to get it but it's just a finicky ledge by the way i think there might have been an update to this section of the map in the flights it used to be very easy to grapple from one side to the other but now you fall you get caught and you drop below this actually happened in the finals of the qualifier last weekend so even the pros, I think, are being caught off guard by this, but you can get around this. You just need to make sure that you steer up as you go through. Make sure you hold crouch the whole time as well so you fit. But yeah, as you're grappling, just steer up with the right stick so you can go up into the vent. I think they updated the slide jump here as well. In the flight, if you had some cracked movement, you could sprint slide and make this jump to the other side. And now you get caught on the uh, the inside of the vent here. You can see I got like hitched on nothing. I lose all my momentum and I go nowhere. I actually managed to jump a bit there. What I'm thinking, because I, I love this jump and I'm a little disappointed that it's gone. If you can still do this, and I hope you can, fun little challenge. I'm going to post this onto Twitter. If you can reply with yourself hitting this clip, hitting this jump, first one to do it, I will PayPal DM you. 20 bucks US. I want to see it happen. I'm going to close today's video with two more jumps on recharge. This first one is super easy to do, but I'm showcasing it because it is very useful. If you're going to learn and apply any of the jumps in today's video, this is the one that I think everybody should know how to do. It's just a good sneaky way to get out of bottom mid and right up to the C stronghold. All you have to do is crouch jump. So jump, hold, crouch to this panel. Then you can just jump clamber right up. Now clambering does commit you to an animation. You can't shoot while you're clambering. So instead you can do a standard jump and land on this pipe. Depending on the situation, this is actually a pretty good spot to sit in. Or you can, with good spacing, crouch jump all the way up and skip the whole thing, keep your weapon ready. And because you don't need to clamber to hit this, I recommend you learn how to do it backwards. Super convenient way to navigate this section of the map, and you can take gunfights at the same time. One extra note about this pipe, by the way, you can shimmy pretty damn far on this pipe. Even when the pipe disappears, you can keep going. There's no ledge here, but I can stand here up until the corner where it pushes me off. So pretty useful to know. You can actually reach it with a crouch jump and sit on this ledge and take a fight from this angle. So you don't have to go to the corner. Depending on the situation, this is a great alternate way to approach C. The last jump I'm going to show in today's video is this one right here from mid, directly up to top control. Very useful, very popular jump, but a bit pesky to land. So let's break it down. The first thing you need to know about this jump is just where the damn clamber ledges are because the clamber ledge is very small and you can't access it from the front. If I jump from the front here, I can't clamber anything. But if you come from the side or from like the corner of it, you can still get this clamber. Same with the other side. You can jump from the other side and clamber it. And because it's such a small ledge, you got to be really careful jumping up there and think about how you're positioned 
before you jump. So for example, if you're coming up from bottom mid, I'd say push your body kind of against it so that you can very easily kind of jump back up into it and grab this ledge. That's the first step. Just make sure that you don't miss this clamber when you go for it. Once you've got that, the next step is to jump past this frustrating and I assume strategically placed vent that's just here to ruin your day. To do that, you have to perform a late jump off of this ledge by very briefly walking off of it and then immediately jumping and turning into the doorway. This could be tough to get the hang of, but I'm just tapping away with the left stick or with the keys and then immediately jumping before I actually fall off the ledge. Same with the other side. This side can be kind of tough. I find if I turn and look first, that can help. You can do it all in one sequence, though, if you get it down. And once again, if you are very clean with this, you hold crouch, you can skip the clamber, too. And that is all I've got for today's breakdown. If you made it this far, you have now learned basically all the most important skill jumps across all the ranked maps, minus Behemoth. So hopefully you gained some value. You learned something new in today's video. And if you didn't, maybe this jump will get you. There's one jump up here, actually. If you grapple and you hold crouch, you can sit on this ledge on the wall. If you're playing oddball, you got a setup here. You can bait people into this hallway. It's a pretty great spot. Okay, that's it for real now. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of all this stuff, what you've been enjoying most about Halo Infinite, and what else you want to see from me. By the way, if you make a sick play with any of this movement, feel free to post it on Twitter and tag me. I'm a fan of good Halo in the end of the day, so if I watch it and I think it's sick, I might retweet it, I might quote tweet it, so feel free. Also, in case you're wondering where I am in between YouTube videos, commentating Halo is a big goal of mine, has been for years, and recently I've been making some pretty big strides. Thanks to you guys, I am the host of Halo Championship Series for Europe. I've done that twice. We got a big event coming up on December 1st. I'm hosting the third qualifier, so hopefully you guys can tune in. If you want to keep up with me, you can do so on Twitter. You can also check me out on Twitch. The moment I post this video, I am going live on Twitch.tv. I'll be streaming. If you got any questions about Halo, you can join me in the chat. You can ask me there. So plenty of places to catch me in between. I don't just post on YouTube, but you can also sub here. If you guys like the content, you can check out related videos and I will see you in the next one.